Hey guys, today on the Integrated Entrepreneur, we're going to talk about turning anger into res results. And a lot of people don't understand tapping into the dark side. They don't understand using anger the right way. So most of our lives we've heard, right? Being angry is like holding a hot potato. You know, the only person it hurts is you. That's true if you let it do destructive shit, right? Like if, if you get angry and then you start making bad decisions or make big decisions when you're angry, okay, that never works out. But I can tell you that most of the progress I've made was because someone pissed me off, a competitor, a friend, a family member, somebody I despise online. You get negative energy from how many different sources throughout the day, okay? Use that. And I'm going to show you how. What'd you say, Keith? The cup runneth over on people giving me excuses to be pissed off. <laughs> yeah, it's unlimited because you're always going to find things that you don't like, you know? All right. I remember getting cut from a team that I, I shouldn't have been cut from. Okay. And when you get cut, there's obviously a lot of disappointments, right? I played hockey at a pretty high level. So I, this didn't happen a lot, but you know what? It was great when it did happen. Why? because it made me go back and double and triple down on the work, right? Yeah. I was so mad the entire season that I didn't make the one team that all I did was train and train and train and train. And right. so the next time there was tryouts for that team, it wasn't even close, right? Now, there's a lot of lessons there, right? You fail the first time, you get back up, you put more work in and then you succeed, right? That's the overarching story without the pain of getting cut. I don't have that fuel that drove me to wake up every single day before school, work out, get to the rink, do what I needed to do to improve. All right. Let's talk about the greatest basketball player of all time. We can get on this whole Michael Jordan, LeBron James shit if you want. Michael Jordan is the, the, the epitome of that whole storyline, right? Yeah, who gets cut from their ninth grade basketball team and then later on becomes one of the best players ever to walk on a court, right? And so there's there's two ways to handle anger. You got a you got prisons full of people who handle it the wrong way. Yeah, and then you've got tranches of successful business individuals and professionals and athletes and all the people who handle it the right way, which is by fuel, right? And yeah. I'm not forgetting the military, dude. It was part of my one of my tech training schools and kept getting this shit wrong, whatever. It was on one of the special operation task things we were doing. Yeah. And I let it beat me, right? It didn't beat me long because when I started to show my ass the wrong way, I was quickly met with five dudes who put me back into the place I was supposed to be. But the lesson that was instilled in me was like, Dude, there's really one or two avenues you got here. You can let this ruin your whole fucking day. Or you can use it, take a step back, get your bearings together, and use this shit to fuel you. You're better than this thing. And I've always carried that with me. So, like, your point on it, if your gun's pointed in the right direction, you just got to pull the trigger. Yeah. But if it's pointed in the wrong direction, you got to know how not to pull the trigger, right? Or you got yep. those consequences. So, to me, anger is is a vitamin. It's an energy drink. I don't go looking for it. It's not something that I have to have a daily dose of. Yeah. I find it. It's there. But those days where it's like, holy fuck, man, what else could go wrong? Yeah. That next four or five days crush life. Business is great. We're doing amazing things. And so, you know, I think it's, it's definitely one of those things that's got to be harnessed the right way. Well, that's the biggest part of it, right? is using it the right way. If you use it and it impacts your decision-making, that's not good. That's when you get in trouble, right? Like your jail example. When you use it, I think people let it impact their decisions way too much, right? Just because you're using anger as fuel doesn't mean you should walk around pissed off, right? Because if you are pissed off, that energy, when you're selling somebody, right? All selling is, is a transfer of emotions. Right. Okay, so if you're coming from a place of anger and you're speaking to clients all day, that is a bad position to be in. That's not going to help. 
right? You need to find something. Usually for me, it's physical exertion. Do something that allows you to release that anger yep. and then go back to your productive activities, right? Calling clients, speaking with clients. You don't want to carry around and be angry all day. But how we use anger is fuel, right? Like I'll give you an example. I have colleagues in the finance space that copy everything I do. When I first started, it drove me nuts. Okay. It drove me nuts. And now when I see it, I kind of take it as a compliment and I laugh. It still pisses me off, but it pisses me off enough where, Hey, if I know I have extra work to do and it's six o'clock, I didn't get it done. I'll think about that. And I'll think right. about it until I get off my ass and finish what I'm doing or get ahead of what I needed to do. Yeah. Okay. So these guys don't understand it, but when they post about a big win, and by the way, I like when my competition wins. You know why? Because if they can do it, I can do it. And so when I see them posting things, it actually drives me to work harder. Why? Because I feel like I need to catch up. I feel like I need to beat them. I need to get ahead of them. That's how I'm wired. So if you know that, you should be looking through the day, looking for things throughout the day that's going to give you that fuel. Mm. Because believe it or not, let's just say – Three times a week, I find that fuel and I work an extra, let's say, hour and a half. It's not a lot of time, but guess what? That's four and a half extra hours that I put in that week. And over the course of a month, that's almost, you know, that's anywhere between 18 and 24 hours. Okay. That's a whole, that's half a work week that you're getting back. Why? Because you use the right fuel. You have this fuel source. And by the way, it doesn't run out, guys. Have you ever had it run out, Keith? No. No, because when it starts to fade, I typically go refill. <laughs> Why? You, we laugh about it, right? But I think here's the big difference that a lot of people listening may not tie in or link together. We've figured out what drives us and how to harness that thing and then how to go find it because we know we need it. Yeah. I've also found to your point, there is a difference in between what energy I need to go find based on what I need to do that day. So if it's a, a different flavor of anger that may not be business related, I got to go to the gym, right? Because it's more personal shit that I need to go beat out of myself. If it's business shit, I have to walk away. I go outside, I get sun on my skin, I, I chill for just like, a, it's not probably not even five minutes. To me, it's an eternity because I'm not at the desk, but that's my separator from the thing. And then I come back and I work on something different. I skip to the next most important thing on my book and I put the thing that was pissing me off back on the to-do list. I don't delete it, I just stop it because the reality is it's probably something very small right in front of me that I'm missing and yep. I just beat myself to death on the thing. If it's business though, I just need to be locked in my office silent and like, let me work extra hours because I'll get on a winning streak and then I don't want to leave. That's what'll happen, right? Yeah. So I think- Dude, those winning streaks are You gotta identify what flavor of release you need from that anger because one to me will not help the other. If it's business and I go to the gym, it doesn't work. I come back pissed off, right? <laughs> So I've had to figure that, that out too. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. And, and you should also get a good check on where you're at. If I've had arguably the worst week ever, right? You lost people and you're just not in a good mental state. Probably not the best idea to go looking for anger for fuel. <laughs> <laughs> just telling you guys, don't do it. It doesn't work out as well as you would think. Right. But... If things are good or things are average or things are normal, right, and you need a little bit more energy, you need something that's going to motivate you to do the extra, to get it done, to stay up a little later or to wake up a little earlier, then yes, that's exactly when to do it. I'll give you guys a great example of this. I love working out. I hate waking up to work out. Mm. Okay. I, I hate it. I do not enjoy getting up at 5.30 in the morning or 6 o'clock in the morning 
leaving my warm bed with my wife and leaving the house or working out in the garage, that wake up point is miserable for me. What really works for me is I imagine myself that they are already up or they're getting up and going to the gym and they are going to gain some type of leverage or advantage over me. All right. I'm telling you guys, like literally do this. And just the thought of somebody I don't like getting a leg up on me will absolutely get me out of bed. Dude, you have given me so much ammo to use against you right now for the rest of our friends. (laughs) This is great. Please, I want to know how you're going to use this. You'll be a billionaire in a week. (laughs) Yeah, no kidding. (laughs) Because I bet you could guess a couple of those people. I I will have a life-size cardboard cutout of them. (laughs) Bro, that would be – I would be competing on Mr. Olympia if he did that <laughs> and be a billionaire. Here's the thing, dude. That's – like you, you got to go there sometimes yeah. to give yourself the competitive edge. So to your point of like, well, certainly you don't want to shit on your competition and be that guy who speaks negatively open about them, right? I, I also – make sure I'm checking in on people. Not because I don't want them to do great, but I got to make sure that I'm not slipping. Right. And when I say that, I don't mean like your buddy down the street who doesn't make as much money as you. Right. I mean like the guy you're fucking chasing, the girl you're chasing, the thing you're chasing needs to be what you're checking in on. Now, if you can call the person that you're chasing, that's not the right person. You shouldn't be able to get a hold of these people. They should be that. I, I try to emulate the moves that they make. Now, obviously, I'm not buying a 500-foot yacht, and I'm not doing the airplanes and shit like that yet. <clears throat> but I'm investing in a way that is, it's the same in my world. Yeah, right? It's the yeah. same magnitude. It's the same thing. So I do watch, emulate, because at the end of the day, what are we all doing? We're all doing the same thing and pretending that it's different from the next guy. Right. But it's not. They've just figured things out in a quicker method. So find that thing that drives you to that thing and go pursue it and check in on it because it is, yeah. you know, bodybuilders don't uh, don't not eat. Bodybuilders don't not use supplements. Right. You have to yeah. they go get it because they're chasing the thing, which is the stage presence. So. I bet if half the people listening would em, em, like do this one thing, just implement it, they, they probably yeah. would see major changes in the way that they're producing, right, over the next couple of weeks. It's that quick. Absolutely. This is something that anyone can do and get instant results, right? Because you won't have a shortage of people that piss you off. It's just harnessing it at the right time and the right way that matters. And if you can put that together and put it together consistently, it works out really well. Obviously, nothing is going to be just structure and discipline. But there are times that you get so much that you have to do and you have such a short time period to do it in, right? That sometimes even being regimented and having that discipline, you don't always get through it all. And so when you need that extra, this is a really good place to go to dig to get it. And I think too many people think that it's going to change who they are or how they function. And it's literally just turning on a switch, turning off a switch, right? I'm pissed off. Why am I pissed off? Well, because I don't like Keith. Keith did X, Y, and Z. I got to catch him. Okay, cool. Bet. What do I do to catch him? Well, I got to knock out these products. Okay, well, I got, I don't have the time, but I'm going to make the fucking time right now, right? Yep. And that's the conversation you're having with yourself in your head on this. And it's giving you that fuel. Yeah. And, and, and the reality is you don't even realize that you're talking yourself into doing the thing that you're trying not to do. Yeah. Right. Here's, here's the other yeah. component. It's like to that point of finding time. I don't have you, have you heard of the term micro learning? No, I just heard the concept the other day defined as micro learning. And it was a challenge from a business guy who says, the more you know, the better in business you'll be. He doesn't specify 
the topic of what you know or the subject matter. It's more talking about micro learning and, and what that can do for your business and learning things in five to 10 minute clips yeah. randomly. Right. So he then shuts up. He's like, close your eyes and think of what you're doing in a daily basis over and over again for five to 10 minutes at a time. It's fucking scrolling the internet, right? Scrolling Facebook, scrolling yeah. TikTok. Eliminate that and inject micro learning. Now you're learning about, but don't do the same subject every time. Do something different every five to 10 minute micro learning session. Now you're learning about five to 10 new things a day times five to seven days a week. It's finding time. Cool. Make your micro learning about all the shit you need to do to catch the guy who's whipping your ass currently, making you feel the way you feel, right? Micro learn about all the shit you should not do anymore that has put you in that position to make you mad. <laughs> like That's what we do on a daily basis with clients. That's what you do on a daily basis. I mean, we're doing it with our kids. We're figuring it out. Like what's made you mad? How do you harness that anger to something positive? This is yeah. shit we've been doing since we shit in diapers as children. We've been learning this thing. Yeah. Now you harness it for your company. Yeah. And guys, this is something that you should teach everyone around you too, right? Like this is a great lesson for kids because kid, kids get angry. They don't know how to deal with it. They need an outlet. So you know where this really helps me? Because I love procrastinating. You would never think that. No one. You, not one person would think that knows me. I like to procrastinate. The truth of the matter is <clears throat> I do. And I do it a lot. And this is what snaps me out of it usually. Procrastination kicks my ass. This is, this is how I fight, fight procrastination is using anger, thinking about somebody getting an advantage or getting ahead of me and me saying, I'm not never going to let that happen. And let me just get this done now. Okay. And so a lot of people struggle with procrastination. I don't know why. I think it's very natural. Actually, there's no one that I've had an honest conversation with that says they don't not procrastinate, right? Like everyone does it. It's just how quickly can you end that cycle? and get to going on to what you need to do. Right. This is a great tool for that. You have to identify that you're procrastinating. <laughs> yeah. Because I feel like I'm like shit. Relaxing. It's good concepts, right? So like wrapping this thing all up is like, anger isn't just the emotion that we're talking about, right? It could be the lack of something. It could be you missing out. It could be a fear. It could be all those things. Whatever your anger, use that word to identify the thing that drives you to get off your ass and actually go do more. Do what this you do. doesn't work if you're just getting off your ass to do what you're supposed to do already. This yeah. only works to your benefit if you're doing the bare minimum that you're supposed to do plus a lot more. And the yeah. anger comes in on the a lot more phase. Right. Because that's really what we're about. If you can not get angry and stay status quo and you're comfortable, fantastic. This is the wrong podcast for you. If you're <laughs> angry and then you realize whatever's causing you to be angry is really the fuel to drive you to the next goal line and you can harness it and you can deploy it the right way. That's what we're talking about, because that then turns into scaling more money, bigger problems, more shit funner things, more people to help, etc. There's a huge difference in those two, finding the anger and harnessing it for bare minimums and greatness. Be great. Don't be a... I love it. All right, guys, listen, I'm going to ask you all to please share this show. That's the only thing we're going to ask. We don't run ads. Just share the show. Get it out to as many people as you can. Only if you got something out of it, which I'm sure you did. And if you guys have things you want us to cover, you have questions. For Keith, for myself, doesn't make a difference. Send them in. Send them in to us. We will be happy to cover or do an episode just on something that you need help with. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you guys. Share the show. We'll catch you on the next one.